The next thing we'll look at is the code interpreter. So if we enable the code interpreter, it allows our custom GPT to actually run or execute code. So this doesn't have to be uh, something that actually directly involves the user writing code, right? You, you could ask, you know, make me a custom GPT that takes my code and runs it and tells me the result. Sure. But there's a lot of situations where we might need to or want to enable the code interpreter that aren't directly code related. So I'll show you a few examples. In this video, I'm going to start by making something that maybe doesn't seem that useful, but it will help us in the next video. One of the challenges I have a lot when teaching any sort of technical topic is creating data sets or finding data sets. And there's a lot of data sets out there, but sometimes I need things that are pretty finely tuned or specific to my needs. So I'm going to make a GPT that will generate me fake data. So let's pretend we run a ski resort. Our ski resort will be called um, Big Dipper. <laughs> so I'm going to ask it to generate me a GPT that can create fake but realistic data sets. Uh, I don't know, for my ski resort called Big Dipper. Examples of data sets might include resort attendance figures, uh, I don't know, snowfall reports, <laughs> and restaurant slash lodge sales. And I'll just say, I want these data sets to be CSV formatted. I'll just start there. So the idea here is I wanna make a custom GPT that will help me as a teacher. It will generate fake data that should be somewhat consistent or real world-ish. The data itself will be fake, but should be realistic and plausible. Okay, let's just start there. And you'll see why I'm doing this because in the next video, we're going to build a little custom GPT that can visualize and create nice graphs and charts with a, a custom sort of um, corporate branded theme that will be consistent. So it wants to call it data slopes. Yeah, sure, that's fine. I don't really care too much. But what you'll see is that the code interpreter will actually help us here. So if I ask it to create a snowfall report for December, let's just skip the, the profile picture, I don't really care. By default, the code interpreter is not enabled. So it's gonna give me a bunch of text at the beginning. All right, well, there's a couple of things that I'm not thrilled about. First of all, it didn't give me a CSV file or CSV format, which is, actually this is CSV, but it's just highlighting it as YAML. Okay, well, I'm fine with that. But I wanted to actually spit me out a file that I can just download, right? I don't wanna to have to copy this data. This is not that much, but still, I don't wanna to have to copy it and then paste it into a CSV file. I'd like to be able to just download a file. In order for that to happen, I actually need to turn on the code interpreter. As soon as I do that, it will be able to generate me a data set that it can use basic Python code to turn into a file and then give me that file as a download that I can click on. Right now, if I try, can you give me that data set as a CSV file for me to download? It will probably tell me something like, yeah, you can take my content and copy and paste it, but this is not a downloadable file. It's still doing the same thing. So not ideal. What I want is to have it generate a file for me. And that's something I need the code interpreter turned on for. So I'll fast forward when this finishes. Okay, there we go. Since I cannot create files for download, you should copy this and save it in a file. But if I turn on the code interpreter and I try this again, this time let's do resort attendance. So generate a data set for resort attendance. All right. It's giving me some of the sort of an outline of what it's going to do. And now notice here, it says analyzing. It's actually writing some Python code that it's then going to execute. So it's just gonna essentially randomly generate data. Um, 
it's not completely random, right? It has some logic. If you're not technical, it's okay. It doesn't really matter. Basically, it's just going to decide, you know, pick different days of the week and uh, make sure it goes in order. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay, it generated me this sample data set. But most importantly, it actually gives me a file I can download. And that's thanks to the code interpreter. Now, it only gave me a week of data, so I'm going to ask it to expand. You know, please do this for an entire ski season or maybe just an entire month. Let's say January. And once again, it gives me a file to download and I already opened it and checked it out. It's the entire month of January. So to help us with the next video, which also has to do with the code interpreter, I'm gonna ask it to generate a totally different data set. Generate me a data set of snowfall for the month of December. Include daily snowfall temperature and uh, snow depth or something like that. Okay, I'll be back when that's done. All right, so that finished up and I click download to get the CSV file. That will help us in the next video. This is not the most useful, but it actually is useful for me in my teaching capacities, uh, needing fake data sets all the time. But most importantly, by enabling Code Interpreter, our custom GPT was able to actually run code and generate files for me to download. It was unable to do that at the beginning, right? It was just giving me some example output I could copy and paste, but it actually wasn't running code. Uh, and one thing I didn't show you is that there's a limit to how much you could actually generate here. Whereas when we're using the code interpreter in Python, there still is a limit to the size of the file it will make for us, but we can run much more complicated logic and have it actually generate hundreds or thousands of lines of uh, fake data instead of 10 or 20 lines at a time. Okay, we'll continue with the code interpreter in the next video with a, a little bit more useful custom GPT. Okay, continuing with the code interpreter, we're now gonna make something a bit more interesting. Let's do a custom GPT that actually allows the user to upload data sets like the ones we just generated and then visualize those data sets but I wanted to use a cohesive brand-based theme. So maybe the same font, the same color palette. One of the things that's annoying when you're using ChatGPT to visualize data is, in my experience at least, it picks terrible colors. They're not consistent. And you can get it to tweak them and change them. But it would be nice if, you know, let's say we run a ski resort like we did in the previous video called Big Dipper and we have very specific brand colors. I would like to make a GPT that can use those brand colors. So I'll do something like generate me a data visualization custom GPT that allows a user to upload data sets and then generates visualizations. Before generating, ask a user for their preferred brand color palette and font to use within the visualizations. Make all following visualizations consistent with the requested palette and font. And I'll just expand a bit. The idea is to make a GBT that allows a brand to generate cohesive, consistent data visualizations. All right, so I'll let it do its thing. I'll be back when it's done. It wants to call it data viz De designer. Sure, that's fine. All right, I kind of like that profile picture. That's fine. And then it's asking me what type of data set should it handle and what types of visualization. I'll just say, let's make it flexible. The most important thing I'll need to do is enable the code interpreter. In order for it to visualize data, it's gonna have to run some Python code and generate those visualizations. So I will enable the code interpreter, which is not enabled by default. Okay, so let's play around with it. We may need to tweak it, but let's ask it to first, um, I'll tell it my brand colors. My brand, let's see, I work for 
a ski resort called Big Dipper. Our brand colors are, and then I'll just pick some hex colors. I'll just use a, a color palette website. I'm just gonna pick colors that are distinctive. I don't think they're gonna look good together, but let's just pick this blue. So paste that in there. And then uh, how about this, I guess maybe this green. Sure. So those two colors, remember what they look like. Our font that our company uses is, let's just say Helvetica. Oh no, Helvetica. Okay, good. It picked up on my typo and corrected that. So now I'm going to upload our fake snowfall data set. Now replace this with any actual data set that you may have. You know, if you actually work at a company or whoever might use this custom GPT where you visual visualize the data set, that's kind of the idea. Let's visualize our snowfall from the included data set. All right. So we should see that it's doing some basic Python here, right? It's reading the file in. It's using a library called pandas to read the CSV file. It's okay if you don't know any of this stuff. That's kind of the whole idea here. We don't have to be technical. Okay, so it says we could do a line chart. Sure, let's do a line chart. Let's do a line chart. And now it will probably use matplotlib and take a look. It's using Helvetica, and, well, at least for the font name here, and it's using our two brand colors. Let's see if the resulting visualization uses those colors as well. Aha, so it's using the blue and it says it's using Helvetica that looks like Helvetica to me, although I'm really not much of a font person. Let's take a closer look here uh, at the actual output here. It is in fact using that font name that it defined earlier of Helvetica. And there we are. Now it chose a light gray background color. Allegedly, it makes sense to make it easier to read. Light gray for better readability, but it is using my blue. Let's try another visualization. Let's add in a second line overlaid over the plot to visualize what else did it suggest temperature was one of the things that we could do um yeah let's do temperature or snow depth and let's see if it uses our green color and would you take a look at that the data set's kind of terrible and this plot isn't particularly interesting but it's using our green and the blue and the font and if i try something entirely different like uploading our resort attendance visualize our resort attendance, I don't know, using a, hmm, um, a bar chart. This is gonna be a terrible chart, especially because this data set's kind of terrible. But I just wanna verify that it's using our brand colors and our font. That's kind of the whole idea here. Okay, so we have date, day of the week, total visitors, weather conditions, special events in season. Okay. Yes, it's asking if we should proceed. It gives me a game plan first and then it gets to work. Anytime you see analyzing there, you can expand. We can see the code. And we wait. Perfect. <laughs> it's using blue and it's using our font. Okay. Again, nothing revolutionary, but just a simple example of using the code interpreter where in the real world with just plain old chat GPT, you would have to consistently tell it, you know, what brand color or what colors to use and certain guidelines and fonts. And, you know, we still have to do that here, but we've kind of wrapped it up into a little package that is reusable. And then if I change our brand color, I could even, you know, realistically, what I would do personally is just hard code in those colors into the prompt or into the instructions that say, you know, if this is a private little custom GPT that I will use only, I don't plan on sharing, then I'll say, use these colors and these fonts, maybe even something like always include our logo in the bottom left corner or something like that. Anyway, 
Just an example of using the code interpreter. There are others we'll take a look at, but this is kind of a fun one, especially when you combine it with the previous one that actually generated the data. Although if you look at this data set, every single weekday has 400 visitors, every weekend has 800, and it just repeats. It's uh, not the most realistic fake data set. Thank <laughs> you.